current state of the industry as of 2010, as well as projections on the Utica Shale. And tonight, I am primarily going to focus on the projections on the Utica Shale. Uh, you can get a full copy of the report, and also I provided you with a fact sheet on the uh, primary results of that impact study. This is where all the excitement is about, and you can see where the uh, green arrow is. That is called the Utica Shale. However, uh, I don't have a laser pointer here, uh, but keep in mind that the oil and gas industry, this is not deep well drilling for us. Uh, we've been drilling through this Utica Shale for more than 100 years. The problem is vertically, you simply <coughs> could not get that rock to release. And uh, Rachel, there's a sample of the Utica Shale. I'm going to go ahead and pass around. Thank you, Howard, for stating the laser pointer. Um, this gives you an idea here. Uh, this is where the Marcella Shale, although there's not much of that in Ohio. Okay, the Clinton Sandstone is about 70% of the wells drilled from Ohio. Here's the Utica Shale down here. But below that, we've got the Beekman Town, Grove Run, uh, other uh, geological formations that I don't want to take away from Larry Wickstrom. Uh, that we've been producing for a very, very long time. So again, we're very familiar with this particular geological formation. Go ahead, Rachel. So let's talk about the economic impact study. Uh, what we've done is we've done a five-year projection on this economic impact study. And again, I'm just going to highlight, we're not going to see much in the first couple years. Ohio is primarily in a leasing and an exploration phase. And so what you're really going to see is a lot of the activity significant activity picking up in the next two to five years. But uh, the oil and gas industry, we are projecting that in the next five years, we're going to invest about $34 billion in the state. You're not going to see that kind of investment in the state unless we think this Utica Shale has great potential. Grow state product, and that is a, certainly it's a combination um, what we're looking at is a statewide output sale of $23 billion, and we're going to generate approximately $12.3 billion for the gross state product. These are now becoming significant numbers here for the state of Ohio. The royalties, um, again, you don't see a whole lot in terms of actual royalties, and please note this is different than sign-on bonuses. Royalties are what landowners get paid uh, based on the production on their property. And so what we're looking at um, by the end of 2015, about $1.6 billion being spent in royalties, which is money that is going to be spent in local communities. And you're already seeing some of that impact with some of these uh, sign-on bonuses. And to give you an idea, that amount is going to exceed everything that we paid between 2000 and 2010. So these become significant royalty numbers. Tax revenues, again, going to be consistent or, or significant. Keep in mind that 11, just because every taxes are paid differently and usually it follows the year, that's why this is just Utica. This does not include the hundreds of other wells we're going to continue to drill in other geological formations. I just want to point that out. So when it shows zero there, it doesn't mean we're not paying any. It's just you're not going to see much in the Utica really start until 2012. And we're looking at about $478 million in, uh, in taxes. Jobs and personal income. This is the number that everybody wants to talk about. Uh, we're certainly very active in the workforce development issue, as others are in this panel, because if we are able, if we are able, uh, to uh, produce the shale clay if the numbers match what uh, we have been uh, told uh, by the industry. We're looking at about 200,000 jobs here in the state of Ohio by 2015. That's why we're working with local community college, higher education colleges, vocational schools, and other groups. <coughs> Our data source for this, obviously there were a lot of surveys, there were a lot of interviews. Uh, we received a lot of data under uh, confidentiality agreements from various sectors of the oil and gas industry. It's not easy to go in and ask for your five-year business plans. 
especially in something like uh, what's going on now. So we took a really hard look at that. We looked at other shale plays going on across the country that have been in existence, especially down in Texas and North Dakota. Uh, we had a significant project committee, which was made up of various sectors of the industry. Uh, we also had ODNR involved in that, and it was further critiqued by Marion College, happens to be the oldest petroleum engineer school in the country, the Ohio State University, Zane State, and Central Ohio Technical College. So what does this all mean? Oh, Rachel, can you back up? I'll, I'll, I'll click you there. What it means is Ohio has a great geological gift we always have. That's why we have drilled 275,000 wells in this state. Go ahead. We have a 150-year history, okay? And rules and regulations are constantly changing to keep up with that technology. The difference here, look at that footprint. That's green in Ohio. That's typical of the landscape that you saw across Ohio. You will not see that. And again, regulations have a bigger play in that. We have a smaller environmental footprint today. Okay, those gigantic derricks don't stay with the well for the life of the well. And again, just think about a horizontal well wall. It's, uh, as I said earlier, instead of 15 to 20 vertical wells, you're talking about one hole in the ground. Okay, and that becomes significant. And then the uh, obviously significant economic opportunities here in Ohio and uh, long-term jobs. Uh, the drilling portion is very temporary. It could be uh, 30 days, it could be a little bit longer, depending on how many ladders you're going, going to do. But when you're talking about the life of these wells being 20 to 40 years, we've got some wells in Ohio that have been commercially producing for 80 years. That means that these are long-term jobs, especially on the production side, and those have to be local jobs, uh, people that are taken care of. Uh, these wells, the pipelines, and other infrastructure. So, with that, that was my quick opening. How's that? Rhonda, we certainly appreciate all the information you've shared. And again, in an educational meeting, just looking for as much information as we can share with you as possible. I would like to apologize to all the gentlemen at the table. We have had some IT errors throughout the day, so I would like when I hand the microphone over that you would introduce yourself just because I don't think what I have to say about you will be just in comparison to what your actual role is, and I think you're going to give a better description. But I do want to say to the group here that we are honored to have Chairman Hall from the Agriculture and Natural Resources meeting with us today. As we face legislation that is correlated to this issue, Representative Cole and I will be working hard together in the Agriculture and Natural Resource Committee, and he's a great resource and a great advocate for good stewardship and for proper regulation in this arena. So just having said that, big, huge fan of or just wave so they know who you are, so they know who to call when the time comes. <laughs> but very good. I will go ahead and pass this on to gentlemen, introduce yourselves, and share your information. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. It's great to be here tonight. My name is David Mustina, I'm the General Manager for Jobs Ohio. Uh, Governor Casey created Jobs Ohio with the legislature's support this year to privatize economic development for the state of Ohio, at least the lead aspect of economic development. So I'm 100% focused on energy jobs in this state, and of course shale is uh, the lead opportunity that, as we see it, you know, for Ohio. Uh, Rhonda did a great job, as always, kind of giving you an idea of why we're excited. But I'd like to add just one or two things. Uh, in addition to the jobs that are related to the drilling and the capital that's going into local counties for leasing and lease bonuses, we're also seeing uh, an increase in manufacturing activity, uh, b and Star, U.S. Steel in this area, uh, Timken and Berrien, even that's, uh, they're seeing the demand increase as a result of shale. A lot of this has been over the Marcellus to the east of us, but uh, the Utica just is going to provide additional demand. So we're seeing uh, activity in our Ohio manufacturing companies, aerial compressors, Mount Vernon is another example. And so this is a broad-based economic uh, drive in our state. Uh, we've also seen even uh, companies that use natural gas, like Potash Corporation in Lima, Ohio, benefit. Agri 